over to the other side of the studio to see what's trending uh, online today uh, with Kathleen and Marsha. Good evening to you. Good evening, Nadia. Uh, you're going to be starting us off then with a look at the COVID situation in Argentina. We were talking on the programme earlier about how it's rising here in Europe. What's the situation in Argentina at the moment? Many have labeled Argentina's confinement as the longest in the world. They've been confined for, they've had confinement measures for more than 200 days now, since March 20th to be exact. Uh, some seven months into their confinement, the country is still seeing exponential numbers. Uh, why is this? Uh, a new study that came out this week shows that Argentina has the world's highest COVID-19 positive rate. So what is what are the numbers? Uh, the there's nearly six out of 10 people that are yielding a positive infection with a total of 800,000 cases since Monday. And according to Reuters, medical professional, professional said that low levels of testing and lax restrictions had propelled the high positive rates that climbed from around 40% in August to just shy of 60% just last week. So here we can see some of the charts showing the total number of uh, cases per day. And here's a chart showing the death curve by COVID-19 in Argentina up to October 8th, as you can see, both steadily increasing since the beginning of the lockdown. In fact, today, Argentina recorded the highest amount of deaths in the country since the beginning of the pandemic, as you said, 485 deaths in 24 hours. So citizens have created this tribute today for the victims of the pandemic, 504 Argentinian flags in Mar del Plata and more announcements coming today from the government for a confinement that was supposed to last up to October 11th. Many hoping for more lenient measures. Nadia. Oh, fingers crossed. The situation there, um, like here, uh, improves somewhat in the coming weeks. Uh, Catalina, let's move on, though, now. You've got a story for us from here in France, something quite different. This is new legislation for child influencers. What's the story? Exactly. France will introduce legal protection for child YouTube stars, according to Political Europe. As it states here, France is the first country to set rules to ensure children influencers on the internet are not exploited, including by their parents. Uh, this protection will also apply to children under 16 years old on platforms like TikTok and Facebook. They want these children to have the same legal protection as child actors and models. And under these new rules, you can face up to five years in prison or a fine of 75,000 euros if parents or anyone posts a video without any authorization. Uh, just a little insight into the child influencer world. Here's this uh, Pew Research Center analysis. They cite that in 2019, children's content as well as content featuring children received more views than other videos. There's also this a Forbes article that, where they show the highest paid YouTube stars of 2019. Uh, there is the top earner, eight-year-old Ryan Kaji, making $26 million with Ryan's World. So therefore, France introducing this law definitely to show that the internet is not a lawless zone. Nadia? If you say so, the whole world of influencers is really quite alien to me. It's clear I'm, I'm, I'm too old for it. It's still a zone of exploration. <laughs> definitely. Um, well, speaking of age, John Lennon, he's 80. Uh, and I imagine there are tributes for him all over the world. Yes, happy birthday to John Lennon. He would have been celebrating his 80th birthday today and celebrations are taking place all around the world. Uh, Yoko Ono went to Instagram to post this image of the Empire State Building that was lit up in blue with a peace sign in his honor. There was also Ringo Starr saying, I still miss you, man. Peace and love to Yoko, Sean and Julian. Paul McCartney saying, I love this picture. It reminds me of the bond between us. Uh, but then in his hometown in Liverpool, many tributes to mark this day. The iconic piano that John Lennon used to write the song Imagine will go on display at Liverpool's Strawberry Field. And they also have launched a worldwide contest to find another great songwriter in honor of his birthday. As they state here, uh, the contest aims to find an anthem that will follow the example of the Lennon masterpiece Imagine as the city plans its recovery from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. But I think we can all agree that finding a masterpiece that matches Imagine will be a very hard task indeed. Uh, certainly. I think we maybe just need to stick with John Lennon uh, for now. Thank you very much, though, <laughs> Kathleen you, and there, taking us through uh, some of today's uh, trending stories on social media. It is time for a short break on Live from Paris. Do stay with us. World News headlines and much more just after this break.